we need a glass vessel in the shape of a cylinder. Look, the egg looks just like a balloon. Oh, and this refraction of light? Okay, let's be serious. Let's put this plastic plate on top, toilet paper tube, and the egg on top. Now knock it over and the egg falls exactly into it. Now three eggs. How about five? Easy? All five eggs fall right in the water. This time we will use boiled eggs, hard boiled and peeled from the shell. Boil your water in a kettle. Be careful with the boiling water. Pour it into a bottle. And when it heats up, pour it into a bowl. Now, let's put the egg on top of the neck and just watch the wonders of physics. The egg literally pulls in. Did you hear that? Let's look again from the close angle. The egg goes in the bottle. The same trick can be done with the burning piece of paper. The fire will burn all the oxygen inside and the egg will be drawn inside even faster. For the next experiment, I got this aquarium. How's the view? Fill the aquarium with water almost to the edge. And now, we break the raw egg inside. It immediately goes to the bottom, but it's not as simple as that. Using our fingers, we create a funnel in the water and the white egg makes it visible. Just look, it's a real egg tornado. And in the center of the storm, of course, is the yolk, which does not even think of spreading unlike egg white, which particles have already spread throughout the aquarium. For the next experiment, we'll need an empty shell, but first, I'll show you how to make it. To begin with, you will need two small holes on opposite side of the egg. Now, let's take a plastic bottle and make a hole in the bottom. Fill it with water, which immediately begins to flow through the hole. But for now, we'll plug it with the finger. We fix the prepared egg on the neck of the bottom of the clay. And now, you remove the finger from the bottom of the bottle and watch how the pressure will put out the entire contents of the egg, like this. Rinse the shell in water, and to remove the remaining moisture, blow into one of the holes. Now, put the shell in a glass container filled with vinegar. Under its influence, Calcium, which the most part of the shell consists of, dissolves. However, the inner membrane will remain intact. After one or two days, we will remove the membrane from the vinegar. Rinse it thoroughly to get rid of the precipitation. Now, dry with the hair dryer to remove all excess moisture. Inflate the membrane so that it returns to its original egg shape. And just look! Now we have a rubber egg. It is elastic and it bounces well off surfaces, just like a real ball. In this experiment, we're working with chemicals, so let's not forget about our protective equipment. Let's take an empty egg, as in the last experiment, as well as alkaline pipe cleaner, water, and aluminum. We dissolve the alkali in the water and add aluminum to start the chemical reaction. When the hydrogen vapor starts coming out of the neck of the bottle, we will plug it with our empty egg so that they accumulate inside the shell. Now, we will install the shell on a stand and ignite it with the gas that comes out through the hole. But do not repeat such experiment at home. It's very dangerous. Meanwhile, our shell explodes. Look, let's look at that again in slow motion. Wow, what a powerful explosion. Don't try this at home. Well, at the end, we will conduct a small crash test of an ordinary chicken egg. We will fix the egg on two coils of duct tape and gradually put barbells weighing 3.2 kilograms on top. Let's see how much of that it can withstand. 3 kilograms, 6 kilograms, 9 kilograms, wow! I didn't think it could withstand so much! 
12.8 kilograms. Meanwhile, the weight is as much as 16 kilograms. Nineteen kilograms turned out to be an unbearable burden for our egg. It turns out the maximum load that an egg can withstand is somewhere between sixteen and nineteen kilograms. But a couple more death moves, and the ace of diamonds turns out to be on top. And here's how I did it. There's already a second ace under the first one. Now I smoothly move the upper ace down and lower one up. When the cards are on par, I push the second ace to the top of the half deck. Look at this king. I will cover him with my hand a little, and I'll gently lower him into the glass. Nothing unusual happens. But now, we will enchant the glass. Let's repeat our trick. The king gradually falls into the glass. But there's another card in the glass. Although, the top part is still from the king. How is this possible? Well, just fasten two cards with double-sided tape. And when they go down into the glass, just pick the top one so that the bottom card is visible. That's the whole secret. Let's take a map and start quickly flipping through the pages, throwing it at random places. We open the book and incredibly, a nine landed on the ninth chapter. The trick of the trick is that the nine originally lay on the ninth page and we just quietly threw out the second card. When you quickly flip through the pages, the map itself will jump out as if it had just got there. Let's try to put a card on the glass and put a koi on its edges. The structure is falling. Let's try to push the card a little further, but the coin still outweighs. Then pour water into the glass at the brim. Let's put a card and a coin as well. Now, the surface tension will now allow the car to turn over. Let's take an ordinary card and put it on. Now, let's put a glass of water on top. It withstands its weight and stand still. As you can see, there are no threads or supports, just a regular map. But the secret is that the card is not quite ordinary. It is double and it's retractable. Half serves as an additional fulcrum. Remember these two cards? I'll put them in random places in the deck. Let's do a little magic and transfer the deck to the other hand. But these two cards remain in the same hand. They're the ones, aren't they? The secret of the trick is that there are two of these cards in the deck. When we remove the first copies, the cards remain at the top and bottom of the deck. A death movement of the fingers during the roll and these cards remain in my hands, and that's all. Let's take a brand new deck of cards just out of the box. Take the Ten of Hearts and put in the center of the deck. Now let's pack the cards back into the box. And now the magic begins. Now I'm gonna pull the 10 out of the box with the power of my mind. Just look. 
And here it is. Clever, isn't it? For this trick, we will need to cut out a window like this in several cards. <laughs> 